recording now. So we have that on. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. I hope you guys have a wonderful break. Guess what? We only have one more week of new material. That's this week. Next week, we have an exam review. And week number 18 is the exam. Now, if you want to do the exam review and, and exam before, if you want to get it all done this week, you are more than welcome to do it. Um, the exam is all multiple choice. However, you only get one shot at it. So make sure when you take it that you understand you don't get two chances at it, multiple choice. And I will tell you that the, um, the review for it is exactly the same as the exam. So if you know how to do the review and next week, that's what we're going to do in class. We're going to go through all of the review problems for the exam. And then if you want to take the exam that, that week, right away, you're more than welcome to do it, but you have until the end of week 18 to finish it up. No, um, I don't, I didn't look at the unit test. Um, it, it's super simple. Um, Samantha, I will tell you that. Um, can we take it during the E session? Uh, take what? The exam? <laughs> I mean, you can, you're not going to, I mean, if you wanted to, if you wanted to keep the exam open while we're going through the practice problems, there's nothing I can do to stop you from doing that. That's absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, no, it, I think it's, when I made it up, it, it's, it's super similar to what we've been going through this year, um, this semester. Yeah. I, I don't think if, if you've done well on the, on the, most of the exams is the assessments this semester, you won't have any problems with it at all. I, I, I truly believe I did not try to put any tricky problems on there at all. I just basic, straightforward kind of things that I think you should know. And I mean, if you wanted to go in and look at it right now, you absolutely can. I mean, you just go into the week 18. I think it's in the week 18 folder. Did I, did I make a new, uh, let me, I'm just going to check real quick to see if I put it in the week 18 folder or if I left it as a, a, a key, like a button. I think I put it in a week 18 folder. I'm, I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, it's in a week 18 folder. So if you wanted to go in and, and check it out, you absolutely can. I mean, you don't. It's just like any assessment. It's not timed or anything. You could, you know, if you wanted to start working on it and, and do the problems, you're more than welcome to do that. It's perfectly fine. Yeah. Okay. This week, however, we have, we're going to be solving radical equations. Um, very similar to solving absolute value equations. I will tell you that. Um, I, it, some of them are a little bit tough. I mean, if you can't factor, you're going to struggle with some of them. Okay. All right. So a radical equation contains a variable within a radical. Recall that you can solve quadratic equations by taking the square roots of both sides. Similarly, radical equations can be solved by raising both sides to a power. Okay. That's it. So the steps in solving a radical equation, isolate the radical. You have to get the radical all by itself. Just like when we saw, remember when we solved absolute value problems, and if I gave you something like, let's say, and this is a good review of solving absolute value problems. Let's say I gave you something like the absolute value of X plus four plus two is equal to 10. Well, we have to isolate the absolute value. Um, we have to get it by itself. So my first step would be to subtract two from both sides here. So then I'd end up with X, the absolute value of X plus four is equal to eight. Now, I can solve it. And that's what it means to isolate. It means to get the radical by itself. So if I had something like two times the square root of X plus four um, minus three is equal to, let's say seven, okay? Well, the radical is not all by itself. There's a two in front of it and there's this minus three. I have to get rid of them. That's what it means when it says to isolate. It means you have to get the radical by itself. So in this problem, I would add three to both sides. So then I would end up with two, the square root of X plus four is equal to 10. So now what do you think my next step would be? Okay, what would the next step be there? 
Square both sides? Cannot. I want to get rid of that too. I want to get rid of this too. So I'm going to divide both sides by two because I want to isolate the radical. So now I have the square root of x plus four is equal to five. Now the radical is isolated. Woo woo. Now I can square both sides. I can square both sides. And I'd end up with x plus four is equal to 25. And then my last step would just be to subtract four from both sides. So x is equal to 21. Boom, done. That's it. Yeah. So the rule always is isolate the radical. Now, are they always going to be square roots? No. Sometimes, sometimes you might get something like this. The third root of x plus 2. How do you think you get rid of the third root? You would cube both sides, right? Absolutely. Yeah, very good. Okay, so those are our rules. So let's try some problems. All right, what's my first step here? Minus five. Absolutely, I want to. I want to get the radical all by itself. Okay, so I'm going to subtract five from both sides. So I end up with the square root of x plus one is equal to eleven. Next step: square both sides. So once I square a square root, guess what? It just goes away. So I'm left with x plus one is equal to, well, 11 squared is 121. Last step, then solve, right? Subtract one, x equals 120. Boom, done. Now, do they get harder? Sure they do. This is algebra two. How about this one? Is the radical isolated? Yes. So I'm going to cube both sides. Why am I going to cube both sides? Because it's to the third root. So I'm going to cube both sides. So I'm left with 3x minus 4 is equal to 8. Okay. And then I would just solve this. I would add 4. So I'd end up with 3x equals 12. x equals 4. All right. Now, here is... The hardest question I'm going to ask you today, and I'm going to probably think nobody's going to get my answer. Okay. Can anybody rewrite that without a radical symbol? But it means the exact same thing. So can you rewrite this without the radical symbol, but it means the same thing? Okay. 3x minus, oh, Samantha. That is absolutely correct. This 3x minus 4 to the 1 third power is exactly the same thing as this. Oh, you watched the video. <laughs> that, that is so, this is such a, 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 an important thing to know. Because when we were solving this problem, okay, when we were solving this problem, Everybody said cube both sides, right? Well, what if it was written like this? Would you still un would you still know to cube both sides? Just if it said one third, would you know that, oh, I've got to take it to the third power? Okay. Because when you have something written as a fractional exponent, you always do the you always flip it over because that takes care of it. Okay, so let me give you the hardest problem that I can give you on our assessment this week. Why isn't that erasing? Yes, clear. Okay, let's say I gave you this on our assessment this week. Okay, and I, I think this is probably one of the harder types of problems I could give you. What if I gave you 2x plus 4 to the 3 halves power is equal to I got to make sure I want to make sure that this turns out. Um, that means I have to get a piece of paper and pencil out. So I, <laughs> I want to, I want to make sure this works out for you guys. So, okay. So that would be, okay. All right. Is equal to nine. Okay. There is no radical in this problem, right? But there is. It really, I could rewrite this. If I really wanted to, I could rewrite it like this. I could rewrite it as 2x 
plus four to the third power squared. Because remember, the top, whenever you're dealing with an exponent, the top is the power, the bottom is the root. Okay, so this is the power, this is the root. Okay, that's what it means. So I could rewrite it like this, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Okay. All right. So how do I get rid of this fraction? I multiply both sides by the reciprocal. And why does that work? Well, guess what? What is what is three halves times two thirds? Don't they just cross out? Yeah, it's just one. So that's why that works. So now I end up with 2x plus 4 is equal to 9 to the 2 thirds. What is 9 to the 2 thirds? Oh, darn it, it didn't work out. Dang it. Ah. <laughs> um, let's, let's redo this problem with a different number here, all right? Because let's, let's pretend it was 8 instead, all right? It wasn't a 9, it was an 8, okay? Because it... Now, 8 to the 2 thirds does work out. No, don't get your calculator. You should be able to do this in your head. The top is the power, correct? The bottom is the root. So if I have a number, I always do the root first. So what is the third root of 8? What is the third root of 8? It's 2. And then I still have it to the power, right? So 2 to the second is 4. So not so eight to two thirds power is four. Guaranteed, it is four. Now, if you didn't know that, you could get your calculator out and you could you could do that. Okay. All right. Lost you. And then this is this is I mean, this goes back. I, I don't know. You know, some teachers don't teach this in in their um algebra one classes. Let's say I gave you a problem like this, okay? Let's say I gave you four to the three halves. What does that equal? Yes, there is one question like that. Yes, I, yeah, that's why I told you this is the toughest type of problem I can give you on, on the assessment this week. What is four to the three halves? Eight, that's absolutely correct. Why is it eight? This is the root. Always do the root first. So that would be the square root of four. Well, the square root of four is two, but I still have the power. I didn't touch that. So this would be two to the third power, which is eight. That is absolutely correct. So that that is how you, you do a, a fractional exponent. They're kind of cool. I mean, a lot of kids, they just, they don't get them. And if you don't get it, just go to your calculator, plug it in. I would like you to get it, but if you don't, just get your calculator out and you should be able to, you know, I don't want you to get it the problem wrong because you don't understand how to take a, a, a fractional exponent, okay? Just get your calculator out. But when you do it with a calculator, make sure you put, If I would definitely put this inside parentheses so it understands, because if you do this with your calculator, it might take four to the third power and then divide by two. That, so you really wanna put your exponent in parentheses. That's just a, a word of warning if you're gonna use a calculator to get that, okay? And some, some do. I mean, there are, there are some really amazing calculators out there, okay? All right, so now we're gonna go on to the practice, uh, I'm sorry, we're gonna to go to the practice for this week. Let me give you guys the Desmos presentation. And I want one of you guys, um, please open up your practice and make sure the, the problem on the Desmos presentation is the right one because something really went wrong this morning and I could not figure out why my answers weren't coming up the same. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to share my screen here with you guys. And just, could somebody just open up um, the practice for this week and make sure that this first problem is problem number one on the practice because as I said something really went wrong <laughs> today when I was trying to do those things it, it, it didn't make any sense I 
Like if you went all the way to the front of this, it says algebra one. And it's like, I know this is not algebra one. I know this is algebra two. Okay, so they're the same. All right, so now I told you guys to isolate the radicals, right? Now there's radicals on both sides. Oh my goodness, Mr. Shanklin, you're really trying to mess with us, okay? You can't isolate then, right? Because both sides have radicals. Square both sides, it's exactly right. However, I will tell you that when you square both sides here, some of you are not going to do it correctly. So I agree, we're gonna, the radicals, we're gonna, we're gonna just square both sides right off the bat, okay? So I've got the square root of the three X plus two is equal to three, the square root of two X minus two. Okay, so I'm gonna square both sides. I agree with that step. It's an awesome step. So I'm gonna square this side, I'm gonna square this side. Well, when I square this side, it's easy. I get three X plus two is equal to. What do I get on the other side? And that's where a lot of people are gonna mess up. Yes, the three needs to be, oh, Samantha, you are on fire today. That is absolutely correct. When you square both sides, that three has to be squared also. So this is gonna end up being nine, two X minus two. Yeah. So now it's no longer a radical problem, right? Now it's just a regular, can you solve an equation with a parenthesis in there, right? I mean, it's, it's no longer, yeah, I would definitely distribute right now. My next step for this problem, I would just rewrite this as three X plus two is equal to, what is that, 18 X minus 18. Okay, now I wanna get the X's on the same side. So I would subtract three X from both sides. So I'm left with two is equal to, what is that, 15 X minus 18. I'm gonna add 18 to both sides. So I'm left with 20 is equal to 15 X. Divide through by 15, just, re, just uh, doing my um, solving equations kind of thing. So I end up with what, X equals four thirds? I'm, I'm reducing down. So the radical part was the easy part, right? Solving the equation, oh, that was a little bit tough. Uh oh, somebody put B? Oh yeah, B is the correct answer, yes, yes. Decimal places? <laughs> I don't want decimals in there. Nope, shouldn't be using a calculator to solve these. You should be giving me the fraction for an answer. All right. Any questions on that problem? That was kind of a tricky one. Why was it tricky? Because we isolated both sides, but then there was still a three in front of there. And that means we had to square that. Okay. Awesome. I think it was an awesome problem. That darn three. All right. Number two. I'm going to let you guys do this problem by yourselves because I have not taken attendance yet. All right. So why don't you guys work on this one, see what you get for an a answer, and you're absolutely correct. Your first step should be to isolate that radical. And I'm gonna take attendance and then I'll be right back. Okay, I heard a lot of dinging, so that means a lot of people were putting their answers in there. Oh, somebody plugged their answer back in. All right, so in this problem, we've got um, 
Yeah. Uh, we have the square root of x minus 4 is equal to, and then I'm just going to add 3 to both sides. And I end up with negative 2. Now, this is telling me right away that there is something fishy with this problem. Because how does the square root equal a negative number? Yeah, we've dealt with imaginary numbers, right? But whenever it equals a negative number, it always gets my, it's like, eh, it doesn't seem right to me. So I'm going to still solve it the exact same way. I'm going to square both sides. So I end up with x minus 4 is equal to positive 4. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Uh, let's see here. So added four. So I end up with X equals eight. All right. Now I'm sure a lot of people probably said my answer is eight. Okay. So let's plug it back in. So if I put eight in here, eight minus four minus three is equal to negative five. Is that true? Well, eight minus four is four. So this is what I end up with. The square root of four is two. So two minus three is negative five. That is not true. 2 minus 3 does not equal negative 5. So there is no solution to this problem. So it is D. Yes. We had a word for that. <laughs> All right. I'm not, I'm not exactly, but I always just asynchronous. As, I'm not sure. Asymptote? No, it's not an asymptote because an asymptote is, is uh, yeah, it's not an asymptote. I'm not exactly sure what you're trying to come up with, but hey, you keep looking for that word. <laughs> I just think of it as no solution. <laughs> it doesn't work. Undefined would be my what, what I would put. All right, number three. Uh oh, uh oh, this one's gonna cause some problems. So if I was going to do problem number three, I look at it and say, like, okay, is is the radical isolated? It it sure is. I mean, that radical is isolated on one side. However, look at the other side. It's more than one term. Oh, that's gonna cause some problems. All right, so. This one here, I look at it and it's like, okay, I'm going to square both sides. All right, so I'm going to square this side. I'm going to square this side. This side's really easy. It's just 12x plus 1. That's not a problem. This side is a problem. Because x plus 3 squared really means x plus 3 times x plus 3, doesn't it? That's what, that's what it means. So if I multiply this out, I end up with x squared plus 6x plus 9. So on this side, I'm left with x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to 12x plus 1. What type of problem do I have? What type of problem? Oh, this, yeah, it's a math that a lot of people do that. They just square the first term and second term. They can't do that. I have a quadratic. I have a quadratic. And in order to solve a quadratic, I must set it equal to what? Zero. That's exactly right. Anytime I have a quadratic, I want to set it equal to zero, then I can probably factor it. So in this problem, I'm going to set it equal to zero. I'm going to bring the 12x and the 1 over. So I'm going to subtract 12x. I'm going to subtract 1. So I'm left with x squared minus 6x plus 8 is equal to zero. Okay. How many of you remember factoring? Yeah, we're going to factor now. What does it factor to? How did you get x squared plus 6x plus 9? I did not get plus 6x. I got minus. Oh, how did I get x squared? Okay. Over to the left-hand side. Okay. Here's how I came up with that. x plus 3 squared means x plus 3 times x plus 3. That's what it means. So I foiled this. I foiled. I did first outer, so x times x gives me x squared plus 3x. And then I multiplied these. So I ended up with plus 3x plus 9. And then I just added the middle terms together. That is how I came up with that um, x squared plus 6x plus 9. 
Okay, so somebody told me that it factors to x minus four, x minus two. Awesome factoring, you guys are perfect. So this factors to x minus four, x minus two, but I need my solutions. So my solutions are four and two. Wow, you talk about a problem that there's so much involved in that problem, right? Yeah. So yeah, the negative four and the negative two are the factors. So remember when we factor it, then whatever makes that equal to zero um, is what is our solution. Okay, so our solution should be positive four and positive two. I love these problems. It really gets you to think about what's going on. It brings a lot of stuff back that we've been working on, you know, factoring, solving, squaring things, a lot of good stuff there. All right, problem number four on the practice for this week. Ooh, it's getting really small. All right, I think this one you guys should be able to do all by yourself. So I am going to turn off my mic. I'm gonna let, well, I'll probably, yeah, I'll turn it off my, I'm not gonna turn off my mic because when I do that, I forget to turn it back on, all right? So I'm gonna let you guys work on that one, see what you get for an answer, and then we'll work through it. All right, it looks like a lot of you said the answer is letter D. Okay, so if I was going to solve this problem, okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write over on the left-hand side so I have more room to work here. So I've got negative six plus the square root of X minus five is equal to negative two. All right, first thing I wanna isolate this radical. So I'm gonna add six to both sides. So I'm left with the square root of X minus five, X minus five is equal to positive four. It's isolated, so I'm gonna square both sides. So I'm left with x minus five is equal to 16. Add five to both sides, I end up with x equals 21. Now, I don't have to check my answer. Why not? Because they don't have no solution down here. So I know it has to be a solution. So I'm gonna go with x equals 21 or letter D is correct. You guys have got this, excellent. And remember, this is the last new material for this semester. So once you finish this week's assessment, and some of you will finish it today, I, I guarantee you, I, Mondays are always my hardest days because as soon as I finish, you know, people are handing in assessments and I gotta correct all that stuff. Um, but you can go right on to uh, the review. Now, do you have to do the review for the exam before you take the exam? Absolutely not, you do not. Um, if you wanted to go and do the exam right away, you're more than welcome to do that. Okay, you don't have to don't have to do any of the week 17 stuff. I would suggest doing it so you know what's coming, but you don't have to. Uh, are there any division problems involving radicals on the assessment? I'm not sure what you mean by division problems. There is no radicals where there's something in the denominator. No, there's nothing like that. No, no. There's no, no, no dividing by radicals. Nope, none of that. All right, let's go to problem number five. Problem number five, oh my goodness, this one's way too easy. You guys should be able to do this one in your head. All right, what's my answer? What is my answer for number five? Letter A? You guys are getting way too fast for me. I didn't even do the problem yet, but I'm looking at it thinking, oh man, the, the radical is already isolated, so I can just square both sides. So that would give me 6x plus 4 is equal to 16. Subtract off the 4, 6x equals 12, x equals 2. Did I do it right in my head? Letter A? Oh my goodness. All right, so now I'm going to do it. I'm going to work it out because, you know, there are kids that they just can't do it in their head. So if I had this problem, I have 6x plus 4 is equal to 4. Radical is isolated, so I'm going to square both sides. So I end up with 6x plus 4 is equal to 16. Now I just have an equation to solve. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So 6x equals 12. Divide through by 6. 
x equals two. Now, I should check my answer, right? Because there is a no solution up here. So if I put two back in here, six times two is 12 plus four is 16. So the square root of 16 is equal to four. So that does work out. So yeah, I can always check my answer to make sure it works. All right, it's really hard to solve if they aren't perfect squares. Yeah. Um, now, I think we'll we'll go through a couple that aren't um, perfect squares. I think there is a couple. Uh, um, Allison, are you asking for this problem right here? I'm not sure what you're asking. Are you asking if it's not a perfect square? Oh, checking the answer? Oh, sure. Yeah, in order to check your answer, all you're going to do is you're just gonna take your answer, okay? So my answer is x equals two. Here's my original equation. I've got six x plus four is equal to four. Okay, so I know my answer is two, right? That's what I came up with. So let's check to see if that works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug two in here. So this would be the square root of six times two plus four is equal to four. Well, six times two is 12 plus four is 16. So now I have the square root of 16 is equal to four. Well, what is the square root of 16? The square root of 16 is four. So four is equal to four, it works out. My answer is correct. So I can check and you can do that with any of the problems. You can always just go back and plug the X back in Yes, yes, you do. You have to do inside the radical first. Yes, that's absolutely correct. Yes. Yep, you have to get you have to get it down to one number and then you can take the radical of it. Yes. Yep. Good question. All right. Number six. Oh no. I look at this problem and it looks really easy, right? However, what type of problem is it going to be? It's going to be a quadratic. That's absolutely true. Because when I take the square root or, or when I square both sides, it's going to be a quadratic. Why do I know that? Because when you square x, you get x squared. So in this problem, I have x plus 72 is equal to x. Okay, seems kind of easy. So I'm going to square both sides. All right. So now this gives me x plus 72 is equal to x squared. What type of problem is it? It's quadratic. Anytime I have a quadratic, I have to get it set equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract the x off. I'm going to subtract the 72 off. So I'm going to end up with zero is equal to x squared minus x minus 72. Now, why didn't I bring the x squared over to the left-hand side? Why didn't I do that? Why did I move everything over to the right-hand side? Neg a negative x squared is scary. You want to keep your x squared positive, okay? So that's why I brought the x and the 72 over because I want to keep my x squared positive. I don't want that to be negative. Now, if that was negative, I would have brought it over to the other side to make it positive. I always want my x squared to be positive. Okay, so now I look at it. It's like, okay, can I factor it? That would be my next question. Can we factor this? Okay, x squared minus one x minus 72. What two numbers multiply to give me negative 72, but add up to negative one? Eight and nine, you guys are, you guys, your factoring skills did not diminish over the vacation. So I've got x plus eight, x minus nine. So my solution is x equals negative eight or x equals nine. Negative eight and nine, I'm gonna go with letter C for my answer. Oh, 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 check it. Oh, I did not check it. I, uh, I better go check my answer key. One second, because I don't know if I caught that when I was doing my answer key. You're absolutely correct. I should check my answers always. Um, and I did not, and I, one of them probably doesn't work. Okay, so I'm gonna, this is number six or seven. 
Uh, okay, I think I got it right. All right. So whoever said check your answer, very good. Because I don't always check my answer. I always think that if I get, if, if my answer that I do is down at the bottom, I always think it's correct. It's not always true. All right, so I'm gonna check my answer here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take negative eight. I'm gonna plug it in here. So I end up with the square root of negative eight plus 72 is equal to, well, I gotta put negative eight there also because that's, that's what my X value is. So negative eight plus 72, what is that? 60, 60, is that 64? And the square root of 64 is not negative eight. The square root of 64 is positive eight. So that answer does not work. So let's try to put nine in there. So then I'd end up with nine plus 72 is equal to nine. Nine plus 72 is 81. The square root of 81 is nine. That does work. So my answer for this problem should be A. Oh, I almost made a huge mistake there, didn't I? Yeah. So there's only one solution there. Yeah. Good. <laughs> You're right. Uh, and, uh, and maybe I'm a little bit too cocky when I do problems, because as I said, usually when I finish and I look over and my answer's there, it's like, oh, that's got to be negative eight and nine. I rarely plug things back in. I, I, I shouldn't. I should always plug my answers back in, but a lot of times I don't. I always just think, oh, my answer is over there. Yay, got it right. But sometimes their solutions don't work. All right, number seven. I'm gonna let you guys work on this one and see what you get for an answer. I'm thinking right off the bat, is going to be no solution just because it looks like it's going to end up being a negative, but that's just my thought in this problem, but we'll see. All right, we only have one answer so far. Oh, there we go. There we go. Letter D. Okay. I think it's I think it's D also. Just by looking at it, it looked like it. But let's let's work it out. Um, so in problem number seven here, I've got eight. The square root of x plus six minus seven is equal to negative 79. I'm gonna add seven to both sides. So I'm left with eight, the square root of x plus six is equal to negative 72. Then I'm gonna divide through by eight. End up with the square root of x plus six equals negative nine. Now this is where the problem's gonna come in, right? Because you can't have the square root of some number being equal to a negative number unless you're dealing with imaginary answers and we aren't. So I am going to say letter D is correct because there's no way we can square something and get a, pot, a negative number. So no solution is correct. All right, number eight for this week, we have, oh, this one's gonna be a little bit harder. All right. In this problem, I have x equals um, 5 plus, my writing's all over the place, uh, 2x minus 10. All right, I want to isolate. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. Well, that's going to give me x minus 5 over here is equal to the square root of 2x minus 10. Now, this is where the problem is going to come in because I'm going to want to square right now. 
right? So I'm going to square both sides. But if I square x minus 5, okay, so if you, if you have x minus 5 squared, that really means x minus 5 times x minus 5. This is where I have to use FOIL. I have to first, outer, inner, last. So that's going to give me x squared minus 10x plus 25 is equal to 2x minus 10. Okay, so that is probably one of the harder types of problems that you can get. It wouldn't be x minus 5 times x plus 5, no, because when you, when you square both sides, you've got x minus 5 quantity squared, so it's x minus 5 times x minus 5. So you got to multiply that thing out. Okay. Now, what type of problem is it? It's quadratic. So as soon as I see that it's quadratic, my first thought is get one side equal to zero. That's always my thought when I have a quadratic because then I can factor it. So I'm going to subtract 2x off both sides. I'm going to add 10 to both sides. So if I subtract 2x here, add 10 here, I'm left with x squared minus 12x plus 35 is equal to zero. Now I'm going to factor. And what does this thing factor down to? X minus five, X minus seven. I like it. Okay, so I've got X minus five, X minus seven. So my solutions are X equals five or X equals seven. Now, we better check ourselves, right? Because we've been, we've been burned before. <laughs> So I'm going to put 5 in here. So if I put 5 in for x, so that gives me 5 equals 5 plus the square root of 2 times 5, which is 10, minus 10. So that's 0. So 5 equals 5. Yep, that works. 5 does work. So let's check the 7 out. So if I put 7 in for x, so 7 equals 5 plus, and then 2 times 7 is 14. 14 minus 10 is 4. So the square root of 4 is 2. So I end up with 5 plus 2 is equal to 7. 7 equals 7. Oh, they both work. Awesome. So both of my answers would work. So my answer should be letter A. So, I mean, for being the last type of problem for the semester. It's not, they're not that bad. I mean, I, I know some students will struggle with the radicals. There's no question about it, but they shouldn't be too bad. All right. Problem. I'm not sure if this is, okay. This one's a good one. All right. So now we have a fraction. Okay. So we have negative three X plus 18 to the one half power is equal to x. Okay, what did I say about fractional exponents? What do we do? Well, we could have written it that way, but if they do give us a fraction, we just flip it over, right? We're just going to take both sides to that power. So I'm going to flip it and I'm going to take this side to the two over one, which two over one is just two, right? So I'm basically just squaring both sides. That's all I'm doing. It's just, so this is just going to take care of this. So I'm left with negative 3x plus 18 is equal to x squared. What type of problem do I have? It's a quadratic. So that means I'm going to bring everything over. So this side's going to be 0 is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 18. Now I factor. The two numbers give me negative a, is that negative, oh, negative 6 and positive 3? No, positive 6. So x plus 6, x minus 3. So I get negative 6 and positive 3 is my solutions. Now, I definitely would check my answers here. <laughs> um, because, you know, you might end up with one that doesn't work. But I think they might work. Did anybody check them out? So if I use negative, let's take negative 6 first. So if I put negative 6 in here, negative 3 times negative 6 
is positive 18. So I'd end up with positive 18 plus 18 to the 1 half is equal to negative 6. Ooh, that does not look like it's going to work, does it? Because that's going to be 36 to the 1 half, which is going to be 6. 6 does not equal negative 6. Does not work. So we're going to cross that one off. So let's try 3. So I, I'm going to put 3 in here. So negative 3 times 3 is negative 9 plus 18 to the 1 half is equal to 3. So negative 9 plus 18 is 9 to the 1 half is equal to 3. 9 to the 1 half is 3 because that is really the square root. So my answer should be letter C. Again, I'm going to go and check my answer key to make sure I got this one right. Oh, I did. Yay. So that kind of makes sure you check your answers. Now, I will tell you on the assessment, if you, um, if you got an answer and you didn't check it, I would not mark that wrong. Because all of your work all the way through is correct. Wouldn't mark it wrong. Now, obviously on the practice, you have to get the right answer right because that's multiple choice. But on the assessment, if you show your work and you did not cross off the one that didn't work, I would not mark that wrong. I, I'd look at it and say, oh, that, that student knows what they're doing. They just didn't check their work. Eh. And you know why I do that? Because I probably didn't mark any. I didn't take, I didn't check my answers either. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Um, I think we only have one last problem here. Number 10. All right. Number 10. Those little parentheses inside there might, might um, mess some kids up, but I think it should be an okay problem. Why don't you guys work that one out and see what you get for an answer? I agree, plus eight divided by two, that would be my first step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awesome when you guys can see what you have to do. Um, that, that means you really understand what you're doing. That, and that is so hard to teach kids. You know, Like when a student says, oh, I've got to add eight and divide by two, you know that student knows what they're doing. Um, so if I add eight and divide by two, I'd end up with four over here is equal to the square root of two x plus four. Now I'm gonna square both sides. So I end up with 16 is equal to, and then this side, I'm, I don't wanna get rid of those parentheses because the, the squaring, getting rid of the radical does not take care of the parentheses, so they, they should stay. So now I have 16 is equal to two x plus eight. Bring the eight over, x equals Four. So the answer should be letter C without checking my answer. Yeah, and if you cancel out the parentheses, you're you're going to get a whole different answer. That is that is correct. So you got to make, and that's why I looked at those parentheses and it's like, oh, that's going to catch some kids because they're just going to write down two x plus four when they're done. Uh, taking a square and it's gonna it's gonna mess them up all right that is it for this week remember next this is our last week of new material you're done boom semester's over next week during our um on monday i'm just going to go through all of the practice problems um i i have them all on a desmos presentation we're just going to go through all of the problems if you want, I mean, some of you are going to look at it and say, oh, I can do this right away and finish up your exam um, this week. That's perfectly fine. Um, you can work at your own pace or you can just keep, you can work along with us. Okay, it does not make a difference. You're gonna wait until week eight, team? That's perfectly fine. Yep, absolutely. All right, you guys have a great week. Stay inside, stay warm. Bye.